Hey mama, are you looking for a natural remedy for postpartum cramping? By the end of this video, you'll have my three natural remedies for postpartum cramping, but you can also use for PMS for years to come. Let's get started. Hey mama, I'm Tara Gregorio, certified woman's herbal educator and mama of twins, and I've helped hundreds of women integrate natural remedies and now it's your turn. Hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified of my new video each Tuesday. So we're talking about natural remedies during the postpartum time, but wait, if you're experiencing a fever, abdominal pain, smelly discharge, you may have something called endometritis, which is a life-threatening uterine infection. So please contact your doctor with any fever, discharge, and pain. After birth, it's common to have these pains, which is called involution. It's a natural process that the uterus returns to its pre-pregnancy size. The pains feel very cramp-like, menstrual cramp-like, and there are herbs that you can take to help reduce the pain naturally. Now, some women choose to take NSAIDs, and that's certainly fine, but know that there are side effects to taking NSAIDs as well, including constipation and disrupting your gut health microbiome. So you may choose to use herbal remedies over the NSAIDs for the cramps now, but also the cramps that you may experience during PMS every month for the rest of your life. So number one, the first herb I would use is cramp bark or black hoss. So both work similar. They're both antispasmodic and a uterine tonic. Use one or both of these together for abdominal pain, afterbirth pain, endometriosis, painful labor, and fibroids as well. You would take three to 10 milliliters a day, three times a day, has also been used with threatened miscarriages, painful labor, suggesting it's safe during pregnancy and lactation. It's considered most likely safe. So with any herb, you always want to start off in small doses and work your way up to higher doses. And if you're breastfeeding, always keep in mind that you're looking at your child to see the response. If you're taking large doses, you would look at your child to look for lethargy, um, fever, constipation, rashes, insomnia, and um, any skin eruptions on their skin, that would be, or drowsiness, that would be a sure sign to stop any herb you're taking while breastfeeding. Number two, motherwort will be your new best friend. Two to four milliliters a day can help with nerves, spasms, it's also a uterine tonic. So not only will help your nervous system relax, it will also reduce the amount of spasms that you're receiving during this time. Where it's considered safe during breastfeeding, but not during pregnancy, so keep that in mind. The third herbal blend is catnip and chamomile. Again, you could take this in the postpartum time, but also if you experience PMS every month. So this can help with mild cramping, Catnip is a nervine and sedative, a slight sedative, and can help with afterbirth pains and insomnia, as well as chamomile can be reduce your nerves. It also helps with colicky and abdominal disruptions. It's called a carminative. So it helps us reduce bloating, helps moms reduce bloating, but it also could pass through the breast milk and help your child if they're having colicky symptoms. You may have heard that chamomile is not appropriate during lactation, but this is based on a study in 1979 where they found teratogenic effects using a concentrated amount. So the amount that they used in the study is way more than you would ever receive in a cup of chamomile tea. And actually in Croatia, it's the first thing they give to a new mother. They said, did she get the cup of chamomile tea? So it's common to first start out with a cup of chamomile tea for yourself and your child. So what you could do is make a cup of chamomile and catnip tea and then add in a tincture. This is a tincture. You would add in the tincture of cramp bark to the cup of tea and then that would be a way to help with any cramping postpartum or during PMS. You would add the tincture to the cup of tea to get a full spectrum to help your body relax and help the spasms reduce. Alternatively, in Chinese medicine, they use something called moxibustion. Have you ever used that? Let us know. 
So they would put it on your lower back and your abdominal area. If you work with an acupuncturist, you can certainly help them. If you're in the postpartum time, you want to warm the uterus and warm the body. You could try it at home as well. You would purchase a moxa stick and you would look for the points that you would place over to reduce cramping monthly for PMS, but also in the postpartum time. So it would be on your low back and your abdominal area, ideally one to two times a day for 30 minutes if you could, two to three days after birth. So after birth, if I'm catching you right at that time, you could start moxibustion on your low back and your abdominal area if you have the time to warm the uterus and reduce postpartum cramping. If this video was helpful to you, please share with a girlfriend that also just had a baby to help with postpartum cramping and also PMS. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of my new video each Tuesday. Also, look for my postpartum recovery checklist below. See you next time.